The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As we come into the final stretch of the day, S&P's up 28 points. Now, that would be the big news of the day if we didn't go down here and see that we've got less, well, less than 3.8 billion shares on the day. We continue to go into these highs and the volume all falls out. Now. One of the reasons for that was, in fact, I'm writing about it now. So let me pull this back up. Um, I've heard this for a while, and I've done it for many times, but I'm going to give you a little bit of what's in the Tech Insider today. Um, I forget exactly w where it was. Maybe John in the Den can remember. But everything looked perfect for Amazon. Uh, they were coming in earnings. Earnings actually were fairly good. There were zero shorts in it. There were probably a handful of shorts, but there were almost no shorts in it. And the thing went from, a, memory serves me, maybe 925, 950 or something like that, straight down to 960 bucks. And it, I think, got down to like 700 to solve from memory. And there was nothing wrong with it. The problem was that everybody that had ever gotten long or wanted to be long at the time or even close to being long anywhere around that time had gotten long. There was nobody to buy it. Didn't matter whether the earnings were good. Everybody that wanted to be in it was in it. And generally, you can tell that when the shorts just eventually go away. We've got a market that has incredibly light uh, short interest in it on the grand scale. Individual stocks, there'll always be stocks that are hated. Uh, they'll tend to bounce on a day like this uh, for people that have too short a, a horizon for shorting, and uh, they're the easiest hands to shake free. Uh, when all the experts and forecasts agree, something else will happen. That is one of the axioms of uh, trading. It's not magic. When everybody who wants to buy is bought, there are no more buyers. At this point, the market must turn lower and vice versa. Um, so you've got to see that. But it certainly looks to me like if we don't get a signed deal extremely shortly, uh, that we're in problems. Secondarily, today is the last day of fund buying. This is generally as good as it gets for a while for fairly big moves. and. Did we have a handful of people that probably got in short in the last couple of days? Yeah, but was it a big deal? The answer is no. Uh, there wasn't that much. They're pushing them today. Now, if there were have been a bunch of people that piled on after the Fed, we would have seen that volume in reverse today. We have not seen it. Uh, we also go into two weeks of sucking out about maybe 12 13, 14 billion dollars for new IPOs over the next couple of weeks. That money will have to be raised. It will have to come somewhere. And it isn't going to come from people throwing money from the sidelines in. Maybe a little bit. But uh, there's going to be pressure on this market for a while uh, to come up with that cash. After they're out the door, then the kind of the market's kind of returned. But don't be surprised if we see very soft markets come Monday maybe Tuesday. I think we're kind of right in there. We've had a lot of pushes, and again, uh, we'll look at some volumes today. My guess is it's going to be horrific across almost all of them. Uh, dollar index really whippy, which isn't good for the market. Uh, it ran up earlier in the day, got to almost uh, 97.80. It's now back down. I mean, it took like, what, five, six bars here Go back down to uh, 97.20. Uh, gold, a uh, little lower uh, in the morning, um, but did gap up a bit. Uh, GLD holding fairly well 
in the uh, 120 80s range uh, it doesn't look like there's a lot of volume when you go lower uh, and, and what else do we have going on out here I mean some of these dogs are bouncing like Tesla and some of the other ones um, but I don't think you can read in a lot to them the ones that I've been watching for like Micron and AMD AMD is basically flat Micron's up on fairly uh, a tepid move, not breaking the new highs. It's kind of telling us some stuff. Microsoft did have a lot of people piling on. Apple continues to see people do stupid things by piling on it. It may be the easiest reason to think that maybe uh, Apple stays high is, again, the people won't quit shorting it. Now, that makes it easy for people to continue to push the market higher. But the question is, how broad is this uh, market pushing higher? The answer is in the summation decks. Uh, probably the best medium term indicator there is. Uh, it takes every one of the S&P 500 or maybe the New York Stock Exchange or maybe the NASDAQ and uh, says, uh, were they higher or lower? Now, it doesn't give you a lot of how much higher and lower, but you can kind of see that in the charts. Uh, but what we've had is a uh, declining advanced decline line over time. And that's always problematic when you go and combine that with pushing higher with lighter volume. Now you've got two things telling you that there is not extensive demand higher. Doesn't mean that the market's going to turn on a dime. But it does tell you that you should be extra careful. Those little hairs on the back of your neck where you feel the little breeze before the tornado hits, uh, you should be paying attention to those. Anyway, I suspect that we at least see a little bit of a pullback Monday and Tuesday. And the question is, at that point, we start getting into options expiration. Um, you have a, to have a fairly compelling case that we will be going lower. Uh, if you do go lower into options expiration, Generally, you go extensively lower, not just a little bit lower. We'll look at some of these charts. We've got uh, plenty of time uh, for everybody to give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den. Um, eh, what do we got going on for history today? Uh, history repeating? And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1948, the Supreme Court issues a decision in U.S. Veris as Paramount Pictures at Al. The government's long-running antitrust suit against Paramount Pictures and seven other major Hollywood studios is finished. They lost. Uh, the government cases accused the studios of violating the Sherman Antitrust Act in their total control over movie distribution and ex uh, exhibition. At the time, the seven studios controlled almost all the movies, the uh, country's movies, theaters, even through uh, ownership or their own theater chains and uh, a process called block booking. But uh, you know what? A lot of that law is going to be used against the uh, social media companies soon. We'll be back in a minute. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And I had a email yesterday, didn't have time to get it in from Pete in San Francisco. Um, we keep hearing that there's no inflation. Uh, what world do these people live in? Most of the monthly expenses like health care, bridge tolls, rents, real estate, insurance, and parking um, have gone up dramatically over the last few years. Now, I will give you this. Pete lives in San Francisco, so his experience may be vi uh, wildly different uh, than us, especially if uh, we're wondering whether or not that guy is doing something on the corner. San Francisco may be doing something completely different, if you know the troubles that they have in at San Francisco. Uh, anyway, we do have inflation. The question is whether or not uh, earnings uh, for individuals and corporations are going up faster uh, than the underlying inflation. Um, they also have to get things off the books, and generally that's by a three or four percent inflation rate. So why the Fed is not, they're really not talking to you on whether or not there's inflation for that. They're actually saying there's not enough inflation to outrun uh, all the debts uh, in the market that we've uh, enc uh, encumbered before this. Uh, they'd like the, uh, the uh, uh, inflation rate to be somewhere around three, three and a half percent and then add back on higher interest rates. Around 2% is problematic. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, we just found out that average hourly uh, rates, or not rates, average hourly, um, or people that are paid by the hour, uh, the average went up uh, about another buck in the last reporting period, up to about 2750 for the average across America, uh, for those people being paid hourly. So, you know what, it, it, it has a lot to do with your experience. If you live in Florida, I'm paying $2.60 for gasoline, or maybe two fifty five. I didn't go out and look last night, but I got gas on Wednesday at two fifty eight. I think. Uh, I know you're paying probably closer to five bucks in San Francisco. So just be aware uh, that while not totally anti 
antidotal, 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 uh, that your experience in California is probably going to be wildly different than many other people. But I get your point. It's just not as bad as most people think. And when the Fed talks about inflation, they're talking about inflation that can outrun uh, what we've done in the past. And that's the way that they get rid, rid of things uh, that they pay too much, far too much, is paying with discounted dollars going forward. So just understand the audience that the Fed actually speaks to. They're not speaking to some uh, body working in a place where the average uh, small knockdown house is a million bucks. Uh, a million bucks down here buys you a place on the on the ocean. So, you know, it, it a lot of it depends on where you're at. Uh, what else is going on here? What do we have? Oh, we did this. Um, wanted to look at a, a couple of things, uh, and we'll bring that up. First one is, like I said, a uh, couple of these stocks, people just keep shorting them. And really what you want to do on that, let me bring this other thing up, is kind of short them when they quit. Um, we talked a little bit last week uh, with Tom O'Brien about our uh, long-term short, uh, where we started shorting at about $345 or 340 or something on Tesla. Uh, that's a long-term short. We still haven't covered it. Uh, I think it has a lot farther to go, but we shall see. Uh, but the thing is that it had like a 45% short interest rate at one time. Normally what you want to do is wait until that drops in about half. Uh, if whatever it is, I, it just seems like it does it. Um, that if it's got a 45% short, uh, interest, uh, interest in it at some time, probably too dangerous for you to hold as an individual investor. But when it gets down about 25%, I still don't like it that much, but guess what? If it's, you've got an overwhelming condition as Tesla did, you can start trying to figure a way to ladder yourself in to those massively shorted stocks already. But at 25%, that's generally when they drop in half, that's generally when you want to get them. I've been looking at some options this week, and that's exactly what happened today. I bought half of what I'm going to buy uh, in this option uh, because the price dropped in half today. Uh, and generally, the conditions we talked about yesterday, the day before, with these double repo patterns, uh, is shaping up very nicely. I suspect we have a ton of them all setting up when I do my scans over the weekend. So why there is no guarantee, I'm all about the risk-reward. I'm all about the asymmetrical return and the huge winnings that I have uh, or do get will offset the losses. Uh, now, if you're trading an actual equity, you kind of have to wait until you get the signal. If you're trading options, you kind of have to decide that you're going to uh, commit, uh, but not, yeah, not or dedicate yourself to a trade, but not commit yourself to it. And uh, like I said, uh, one of the reasons I know that the market has a very uh, little short interest in it is just how incredibly cheap puts have become in the marketplace. That tells you one thing, and that is just like a bookie who's doing both sides of a football game, he will just continue to make the spread a little bit bigger until he gets people to offset both sides of the book. And that's what they have to do in options, especially this early in the month and on. Fun buying, not a bad time to start looking at the ones if you think a stock is going to reverse course. Both puts and calls, by the way, uh, because uh, a lot of times the, the uh, a stock will bottom in this uh, time period. A lot of times also it will hit highs and let you know about that. As I said um, about short interest, um, I go through it each day. I make my, made my own database to actually track it. The data is publicly available on FINRA, uh, but if you actually take a look at it um, and say, okay, what's happening? 
you can get those daily numbers and you can get the monthly numbers, um, actually bi-monthly numbers, and you can see just how many people are betting on the other side of it. When they give up, if it's a stock that's kind of hated, that's generally when a, a good time to start looking at it. And if everybody decides to short, almost 80% uh, sign that the stock's going higher. So do what the opposite of what most everybody else does, and generally it'll do pretty good. Now, I continue to say, I don't know what's wrong with these people. Apple's got $250 billion. Uh, on Wednesday, 20% of all the uh, shares that went through were short sales. I don't get it. We'll be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TF and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. And we're back. Um, mm, yeah. But the uh, somebody in the den is just saying maybe the uh, maybe everybody is a little different that maybe he knows. But uh, and the numbers basically are what I follow. And uh, you know they're just given a handful of stocks. They're heavily shorted for unknown reasons. Um, I don't see it. Certainly don't see it in the, in the market or see it in the money. And uh, like I said, 
you never know if you're right or not when you put on a trade. I think I have a pretty good call on whether or not it's a little bit higher or a whole lot lower. And you, I, I am a different trader than many, greatly influenced by rule, uh, uh, fooled by randomness, a book by Nassim Taleb, who uh, asked a question in his book, which is, you know, let's we'll say we have trades and we're trading options, and you have two, uh, or you have ten losing trades in a row and you lose a dollar on each one of them. And then the 11th trade, you make 20, uh, 20 times your money. So now you've almost doubled what you have. Are you a good trader or not? Most people would say no. They want that base hit every day. They want to take home money like they're earning for uh, earning a daily wage. And eventually, I've been able to be incredibly right uh, and kind of vaguely wrong for a long time. And over time, it does extremely well. Um, some people can be a little right a lot, and then they get hammered uh, over time, and the big gaps down or up uh, eventually kill them. And uh, thank God I'm going to knock on wood here. Uh, it's been like since 2012 where I had a stock that actually got smacked fairly bad. Uh, it still happens, and it's going to happen if you play. You will get a surprise, but generally not if you're trading in the direction of the summation index. Uh, it is a great long-term model. Nothing tests better uh, longer term. The problem is you have to be able to sit a long time until you get the bounce that the stock's going to give you. So you can you can feel rather horrible for a while with it, and that's makes it tough to trade. Uh, but it does make it easy to say, okay, uh, stocks overall stocks are closing lower on the advanced decline line over time. Fewer stocks are push the indexes higher. That tells you the breadth is narrow, and historically, that's been a very good signal to say that. The top of the market is fairly uh, good coming in. Volume also, not when it just comes down a little, but as we talked about, comes down a great deal. Previous times at this these levels in the stock market, those indexes uh, and the uh, market volume had turned 10, 11, 12 billion shares. Uh, it is problematic to be looking at a market today that's coming in and is just now, uh, with an hour and 30 minutes left, hit 4 billion shares. That is telling you something. And it's not that the economy's bad. You want to separate the economy from the stock market. The stocks can bounce incredibly, hugely off the bottom. Uh, and that's just because they're oversold. So you have to, at least for some level of time, Disconnect those two. Anyway, no volume, huge move, uh, with the exception of a handful of stocks like Apple. Uh, very few people shorting uh, anything of volume. Uh, and uh, again, options, uh, after the option market makers have been beat to death, um, generally are not pushing a lot out the door. Um, so the, the, those markets tend to be a little thinner. So when I see an option drop in price uh, with no significant reason to do so by half, uh, I have to act. And I did that today. Anyway, I did half of it today. I'll do probably another half on Monday. But I like the risk reward. I don't mind betting a dollar to get five or ten and being wrong half the time. That's a way to go to and make a lot of money. Now, like I said, you haven't gotten the signal in equities. So don't go uh, getting froggy just yet. In options, you have to be there ahead of time. You have to have a fairly good call. And uh, one of the nice things, like I said now, with a VIX in the dumper, um, they're cheap. They're much cheaper than actually owning the stock. In fact, I looked at a couple of stocks that I wanted to go long. It would still be, uh, I think, considerably cheaper to buy the calls. 
than actually own the equities themselves. And that tells you generally one thing, and that is nobody's expecting the unexpected. And uh, why, when everybody agrees, I want to take the other side of that market. I have to take the other side of that market. I have to be on that wall. Anyway, we will uh, move upwards and onwards uh, from some of the stuff that we've talked about. I uh, wanted to see how some of these stocks did yesterday that we talked about in the double repo patterns. Uh, so we'll do that because that's really what I'm looking at. Did those stocks uh, or will some of those stocks actually able to close or come right back up to that level? And some of them continue to be weaker today like CBS. Um, and generally this pattern is very good. In fact, CBS may be the, uh, the textbook case. Uh, in this, and that is even on a good day, this thing's already turned south. Uh, in the meantime, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And of course, you can always put a message in the den. Uh, <laughs> Hector wants to know how many people are still short uh, in BEV. And I haven't, I don't look at that, but you know what? We will take a look at it before the break here. And I will give him an answer. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Again, there are two numbers that you are two different numbers that you want to look at. Those are daily shorts from FINRA. You don't know how many of those people covered before the end of the day. Some of that shorting uh, each day is the market maker for the stock. That will be somewhere between seven, uh, six or seven percent, and 15%, and that's just to continue a market going. They will be square by the time they leave the end of the day, but they will continue some option market making. So there's going to be a base level that has nothing to do with the long-term shorting of it. Uh, but uh, a very good question uh, from our fan out here, uh, Hector, uh, on MBEV, because I hadn't looked at it, 36% yesterday. Now, what's figure a market maker has to do 10% to keep the market moving during the day? That means that 26% of the shares yesterday were people shorting the thing. It's a $5 stock. You're bat crap crazy to short a $5 stock when they've got that kind of stuff. We'll look at the bi-monthlies on this when we come back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. Uh, got a couple of questions about uh, short interest. Uh, again, uh, we were talking about MBAV, and then we'll get this other question. Uh, uh, MBAV has got 32% uh, short <laughs> interest uh, on the last reporting period. And that's every two weeks. Uh, the NASDAQ and the NYSE published data. And that's one week after it, ha or actually 10 days generally after that period. So on the 15th and the uh, last day of the month, they will publish or they will accumulate the data. Normally somewhere around the 24th, you get the data that, uh, of the close of the 15th. And generally somewhere around the 10th to the 12th of the month, you will get the data uh, on how it closed on the first. So you're kind of always looking in the rear view mirror on it. That's why I also look at those FINRA data that shows how many people shorted every day. Again, you don't know how many people uh, covered, but you can get an indication that when those numbers hit the highs, you almost always have some kind of lows. Uh, and yeah, 32% ongoing for NBEV. And of course, when you look at the uh, uh, short percentage uh, for yesterday, it was 36% the day before, 32% day before that, 28% the day before that, 33, 33, 30, 32, 30. I don't know who are these people. Anyway, I uh, got another question about the biggest winner in the market today. Uh, that was uh, Carbon Black. And what kind of short percentages that you saw in that? Uh, on the daily, not much. On the monthly, you had about three days to cover. So, you know, that was one that actually, the short interest actually kind of dropped. A lot of people that were short, it got out in the last reporting period. So not that bad. 4.3% uh, of the market. So, yeah, you can't really say that it was much of a short squeeze on uh, Carbon Black. I think it was uh, up 18% today. It is, uh, like many in that sector, of uh, cybersecurity, C B L K, but it is showing you that there's a little bit of life in some of these. This had gapped down on monster volume back on the 21st of February. It consolidated a very long time. I wouldn't have bought it for earnings. I didn't see anything in it, but I certainly wouldn't have been short this thing. Uh, volume had been light out here, and of course you had uh, what an 18% pop for the day. But uh, you know what? Uh, the last time you saw shorting, and again, uh, uh, during the while I'm on the air here, um, I do show that short interest with the uh, top of the candle for the volume down here. Got my little pointer over it if you're watching on Tiger TV or in the den. And it shows the short volume in the stock. That's just because I have that data that I collect here locally. Um, but I put it in there. Uh, anyway, it's uh, it's something you should always think about and look at. Uh, also, you can always find the uh, the bi-monthly short data on the uh, Wall Street Journal's website. 
you need links to any of those things, FINRA or uh, the rest, uh, just email me at path at tfnn.com. So a nice pop probably didn't have a whole lot to do uh, with that. Maybe this was a whole lot of accumulation after this blew up, but uh, you didn't get a real good sign out here that uh, anything one way or the other was happening before it. Certainly didn't have a lot of people that were just caught on the wrong side. A handful probably didn't like it, but uh, a nice day. Did fill all that gap. Uh, which is not uncommon to the stocks coming back and filling gaps. But that gap back on the 21st basically filled it today. Um, and you know what? Um, earnings were good. But at the same time, uh, you're either hitting new highs and pulling back underneath those highs, or you're filling gaps like this. And that's kind of the exhaustion move on the day. I would not think that carbon black is going to go much higher over the next few days. That is probably an exhaustion move. But you now start want to start looking at other uh, stocks in that same sector. And hopefully, if the earnings aren't coming up anytime soon, you may get a little bit of love uh, spread on those. Okay, uh, got some more emails here. I think let's go back and take a look at that. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, someone said that uh, there's an Easter egg at the end of the uh, Avengers movie about Theranos. I'd heard about it. I haven't seen the movie. I didn't see the one before it. I haven't seen any of the other adventure, uh, Avenger movies either. Just not my cup of tea. Like I told somebody, the thing I'm waiting for the most is the uh, Deadwood movie. To come on, what is it, Showtime? HBO? I think it's HBO. Um, to me, that was a great, great, uh, a great uh, TV show. It ended far too early. The first three seasons were absolutely mind blowing. Uh, but again, it's not, uh, it's not a TV series for the timid. Uh, it is in your face, like uh, Oz or uh, the Wire or some of those other ones. It's not uh, not that. Some people call it Shakespeare in the Mud, which I think is a good description. And, of course, uh, that spun off uh, a, a TV series on FX, uh, another one that I'd love to watch even on the run uh, reruns, which is uh, uh, Justified, which is an Elo uh, Elon, Elon, uh, e e more Leonard uh, short story that was turned into a series that I think is just fantastic some of the best t television series I've ever seen. And again, uh, they're hiring script writers to actually write stuff for people to actually say and recite. It's not just another car blowing up or gunfight, although there are plenty of those in uh, Justified. But, eh, I'll, I'll give a little uh, nod of the head, a little tip of the hat to those. Okay. Uh, to, to do, oh, what else do we want to look? I uh, got a question about Microsoft. Um, now, I'm going to talk a little bit about it with Tom O'Brien uh, today in the Tech Insider Hour. But next week, we're going to learn a great deal about what's going on in Microsoft and in Google. Both of their uh, developer conferences are next week. And, of course, if they're going to do something and they want other people to be uh, and work with it, they got to kind of announce it at that uh, level. Now, I didn't talk a lot about Microsoft's earnings, did pop on earnings, but it continues to amaze me. A company that's done nothing but software for the most part has really been able to turn on two things, and that is uh, the cloud services and its hardware production. They are really starting to put a world of hurt on other PC manufacturers uh, with their Surface laptops and their uh, uh, their uh, other uh, uh, true, well, I guess it, they're kind of tablet-like PCs. Then they have a laptop, and then they have a workstation, which apparently they are selling the living daylights out uh, of people that used to buy very expensive Mac, uh, Mac uh, workstations. Uh, but yeah, Autodesk, a bunch of other people, art, artistic people, are using um, Microsoft's big uh, thing. If you go into Best Buy, take a look at it. 
It is absolutely mind-blowing how beautiful it is. We'll be back in a minute. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Apple and Microsoft uh, had one more qu uh, question in FLX about Netflix. Um, interesting um, idea about how they're going to cut down uh, the uh, price going forward of their content. And uh, probably talk to Tom about that either uh, in the 3.30 hour or maybe next week. Depends on how fast we get through the, my list of stuff uh, that we talked about. Uh, but uh, very interesting, and that is uh, that uh, they are trying to cut the cost down. Um, I got rid of them at the beginning of this year, last year. I can't even remember. It's been so long since I've had it. I've got Amazon Prime. Um, I keep looking at all the new stuff on Netflix, and there doesn't seem to be a lot that really calls my name. So I don't know. It seems like Amazon Prime just seems to have a lot more of the stuff that I want to watch. But... Uh, you know, when they've got a few new things on, I'll watch it. Then I go back to watching uh, X-Files. And uh, man, remember those days when uh, alien colonists were going to come on and uh, and, and uh, overtake the world. Man, that was a kind of a dark time when conspiracies really flew. I forgot how really weird some of those things were. And, of course, I had 
a lot of customers that worked on that show for the special effects. So I never got that close. That wasn't one of the things that, uh, one of the ones we did generally was like movies. They were trying something that they didn't know what would work in television. Uh, you kind of have to know that it's going to work. You're going to have to have somebody actually show you that it works before you get into it. You can't hope that your special effects comes out at the end. But that's kind of it. Um, no vol. Uh, well, no, I would say no volume. I'm going to say uh, vapor volume going into the weekend. Dollar taking a big left turn. Uh, and uh, no juice in the markets. Gold a little bit on the rise. I think I smell something. I smell something. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here Monday, same bat channel, same bat time. See you with Tom O'Brien at 3.30.